All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you and welcome to the Ohio Clean Marinas Program Fall 2020 Coastal Workshop uh, for Lake Erie and uh, Coastal Marinas. We're going to have some helpful, hopefully, information, some updates to share with you this fall. Uh, but before I get started, I want to introduce our team. Uh, this is our Ohio Clean Marinas program staff uh, serving you across the state of Ohio, regardless of whether you are a coastal marina or an inland marina. Um, so my name is Sarah Orlando. I um, manage the program for the state. I am with Ohio Sea Grant in the Ohio Sea Grant College program uh, under Ohio State University. And then our two additional staff members are Heather Sheets. Uh, she is our Ohio River Watershed Program Coordinator. She works primarily with the inland uh, state park marinas as well as the Ohio River uh, Watershed and, and specifically Ohio River uh, marinas down there. Then we have Paul Dravillis. Uh, Paul joined us last year and we're thrilled to have him. He is our program administrator and he is out of the Columbus area and he serves uh, the entire state but helps support our program administratively. So. All righty. So what we'll be doing today, I'll be going over a little bit about the Ohio Clean Marinas program, what we are, uh, why you should care about the program um, and hopefully why um, you should consider becoming a clean marina or if you are already a clean marina uh, consider some of our new initiatives which are a tiered certification program uh, reaching a, a higher level than you may be certified right now. Um, I'll go over and refresh your memory on some of the program benefits and incentives that we have uh, I'll briefly talk about our clean boater program, which is especially, it's, it's an interesting one that we're really trying to build out um, to try and engage the boating public in just being what we kind of call responsible uh, recreation, you know, to practicing good boating, regardless of whether we're talking about safe boating or clean boating and just being respectful and responsible when on the water. Uh, we'll then get into the meat of things, which will be our certification pro uh, process and our checklist. I will say I, I won't uh, go fully into detail on every single checklist item today, but the point of this is to give you a rough idea of what is uh, required to be a certified clean marina under our current program and to hopefully um, you know, pique your interest so that we could set up a more in-depth one-on-one right now virtual meeting, unfortunately, um, where we can go through that checklist in more detail and customize it to your marina or your yacht club or boat club. Uh, we're then gonna we put, add, put some time into the webinar for going over some current projects that may be of interest to you or your boaters. And then again, finally at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. All right, so again, you may see the chat box window popping up here and there. That will just be Paul putting in some uh, uh, links or information. Again, I'll share the presentation with you after today or it'll be available online. Um, so you would be able to access these links after the fact. Um, but there's some good YouTube videos that, that provide an overview about the Clean Marinas program. So we are entirely a voluntary incentive-based program. Uh, we are a non-regulatory program. Uh, we are purely based on providing education and technical assistance to the marine industry and helping you learn more about some environmental best manager practices that help prevent or reduce pollution that may occur at your marina or quite honestly may end up at your facility and, um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's right before it hits the water. So you have a unique opportunity to help not only address pollution that may be generated on site, but also off site and that may end up at your facility right near the water. And then uh, very importantly, we recognize you for your environmental stewardship. So for your efforts in this program, we then help market you, um, you know, help promote your facility, and even help educate your boaters on the efforts that you're taking and uh, 
the way that you are um, taking an active role in, in this case, when we're talking about Lake Erie and coastal marinas, really keeping Lake Erie a healthy, safe, and um, environmentally friendly place to be for boaters. So why should you care? Why should you care that this program exists? Uh, why should you consider uh, joining the program or maybe refreshing your, your membership in the program? Uh, I alluded to this right before, but marinas, I think, are have a very unique opportunity. Um, if you think about your home, your community, um, maybe colleagues or other family members that are in businesses or other companies, um, a lot of those are inland, right? They, they, um, they're away from the water. And um, yes, absolutely, there's things every single person can do to help protect our water quality. But marinas have a unique, and I think something that they should brag about, an opportunity to use their location near the water to help uh, put practices in place to protect that water and enhance that water. And so my personal perspective is not only should you, um, you know, be doing the right things to protect that water, so you have, you know, wonderful water quality that hopefully keeps your slips full <laughs> for, for boaters, but you should also brag about it and, and, and talk to your community members and talk to your family members and say, you know, hey, you know, I'm doing my part uh, to help protect Lake Erie water quality. And I think that's something that um, every one of our certified clean marinas should be doing and, and should be promoting themselves as such. Uh, you have the opportunity to become engaged in the protection of the very resource you need to thrive. Um, so we all know clean, clean water means full slips. You know, people don't want to necessarily, and I know this with, especially with in regards to Lake Erie, if, if we continue to have things like harmful algal blooms or um, issues with nutrient runoff or even, um, you know, marine debris trash in our waterways, uh, you know, aesthetically, boaters uh, don't necessarily like to go boating in that. <laughs> um, so we, we're trying to do our part and again, promote yourself as doing such to help protect our waterways and, and hopefully help your business thrive. And then finally, it's a balance. So our goal, and I want to be very clear on this, is, is not to, again, not to be a regulatory uh, program. It is entirely voluntary. And our goal is to help you balance. Our goal is to help you stay in business, hopefully help you grow business by adding something to market yourself a little bit different from your competitors and um, help you have a a really nice looking facility um, so that you have a strong economic impact as a marina business or a facility, but that you also have that balance of that environmental uh, best practices that you're putting on, on site. Um, so I talk about it as sustainability, which sometimes people just automatically go to environmental sustainability, but it is absolutely to me, economic sustainability as well. So some of the potential pollution sources, and this gets to the core of, of clean marinas in general. Uh, I will say clean marinas is not a new concept and it's not new to Ohio. There are clean marina programs all across the country. And uh, historically, uh, really in the 60s and 70s, a lot of the, you know, the Clean Water Act and a lot of those regulations uh, brought about the initiation of uh, clean marina type programs and these practices. So some of the items that uh, could occur at a marina facility or that we wanna be aware of are boat washing areas, blasting, sanding, and painting areas, material handling and storage areas, engine maintenance and repair, whether that's occurring indoors and done by your staff or whether maybe boaters, you know, members may be doing it out in the yard and doing their own kind of tinkering on the boats dry dock areas, parking lots, again, even just if you, if you take away all the other marine related activities, just simply having cars at a parking lot near the water could be a source of pollution. Uh, and so minimizing any sort of leaks or things like that can help. Uh, fueling areas, again, if you think about it, you know, when you're at a gas station and you fuel up at the gas station, if you drop a couple drops of gasoline, yeah, it's important. It's important to clean that up, but 
it usually has gravel and grass and some other um, land based features to process before it reaches the water. If you're at a fuel dock in a marina, that gasoline goes right into the water. Um, and then general yard areas, just general, and that's, that's an area that we are expanding on in terms of um, possibilities with, we talk about invasive species management, native plant management, wildlife enha enhancement, things like that. All right, so the positives of looking at some of these areas and taking action or making a few adjustments on how you run your business or have your, your boat club or yacht club set up. Uh, you can decrease suspended solids that cause turbidity and carry metals. Um, so if you have murky, muddy water sometimes, yes, I will say sometimes that can be absolutely caused by upstream occurrences or, or a recent rainfall. But um, sometimes just putting in some practices around the marina can significantly actually minimize sediment runoff. It's less erosion that's occurring and it, it makes the water look a little bit clearer, um, which, which the boaters are happy about. You can decrease pollutants that can accumulate in water sediments in the aquatic food chain. This directly ties to our fishing impact. I'm sure many of you have heard about the phenomenal walleye fishing that we have going on in Lake Erie. Um, unfortunately, there's also some other things going on, like we still have fish consumption advisories and um, contaminants that we need to be mindful of. And so even though we can go out and catch a ton of walleye in Lake Erie right now, uh, we can't eat all the walleye we want because of kind of legacy pollutants and then continuous um, uh, contaminants that we're seeing in our water column. So you can be part of the solution and, and helping with uh, some of that impact. Decreasing biodegradation, which can lower dissolved oxygen. If anybody has ever heard about the dead zone in Lake Erie, um, that is a recurring problem that happens every year. It's, it's a natural phenomenon, but it absolutely is made worse by human intervention. Um, so if we can minimize the uh, causes of the human impacts that can lower that dissolved oxygen and, and help improve our oxygen concentrations in the lake. And we can go into one-on-one, -on -one, I can go into more detail on, on some simple things you can do to help that. Um, that can help our dead zone. And so that we don't have um, things like sometimes fish die-offs or, or when you hear about sometimes the drinking water plants where um, there's a, a boiling alert or, or something like that, an advisory, uh, because of sometimes the dead zone sloshes up into our water intakes. Uh, decreased phosphorus entering water, which also decreases algae growth. Uh, that is absolutely a big help uh, when it comes to harmful algal blooms. And I will say while I'm focusing on Lake Erie and the coastal marinas, um, there are harmful algal blooms in every U.S. state that has been documented in the recent years. Um, every, I should say, land-based U.S. state, I believe, besides Alaska. And uh, throughout inland Ohio. Uh, so reducing our nutrient runoff, specifically phosphorus and nitrogen, is a key, key thing that every single one of us, um, both on the water and at home and in our community, uh, if we can do small steps, it can really add up to make a big difference. So um, that's a key one that we're looking at and encouraging others to do so as well. And finally, decreasing oil and grease, which can enter the water and harm aquatic life. And again, that's getting back to the very beginnings of the Clean Water Act and, and kind of where this program started. So, all right. So I, I, I mentioned that, again, the program has been around as a national program. It was initiated in some part due to some of the uh, legacy issues that we had in the 60s and 70s and the Clean Water Act. Uh, Ohio's program started in 2004, and we are actually one of the longest running sustainably funded clean marina programs in the Great Lakes and quite possibly the country. So we are incredibly lucky um, that we have the strong support of our partners in Ohio. Um, our program, everyone is a little bit different state by state, but for Ohio, we are a true partnership between industry, agency, and university. So I am with 
Ohio Sea Grant, who is tied with Ohio State University. Heather and Paul are with the ODNR Division of Parks and Watercraft to provide that agency support and statewide support. And then we very strongly partner with the Lake Erie Marine Trades Association, which I will say historically, you know, has had a presence on Lake Erie, but absolutely is now working across Ohio with boaters uh, through the Boating Association of Ohio. So the reason for that balance is my role is to stay in touch with Ohio State and other universities to get that research-based information, that science-based information, so we continue to update our, our practices based on the current science and help with research, uh, which I'll talk about later uh, on some of these issues that you all may be having to deal with. Um, and then Heather and Paul being with DNR, they are a strong support with watercraft throughout the state of Ohio and um, having that agency partnership. I will say they are with our program, but then through our, we have an advisory board comprised of representatives from EPA, health department, um, uh, several other agencies, and then we stay in touch with folks such as uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and other agencies, and that role is to have kind of an open line of communication, so we are aware of new environmental challenges or regulations, possibly before they're even about, and we can help our certified clean marinas be prepared for those changes. Um, and then more importantly, we can be kind of a conduit, uh, a liaison, if you will, going back and forth. Uh, it's, it's my job and our team's job to listen to you all with the industry, to listen to LEMTA, and to help communicate back and forth between the marina industry and the agencies. Um, again, it's, it's, it's hopefully to achieve that balance of having a strong economic um, marine trades industry in the state of Ohio and supporting the growth of boating in Ohio, but then also doing it in a sustainable way. So uh, historically from 2004 until about 2014, we were working with Lake Erie marinas. And then in 2015, we went statewide with the help and support of ODNR. So we currently work with any marina across Ohio. We consider many things to be a marina. Um, you do not have to be a full service, you know, uh, 300 slip marina with a fuel dock and engine maintenance and, and all of those things to be a certified clean marina. Uh, we have certified clean marinas that, that do, they have 300, 400, 500 slips and, and they are certified clean marina. And we have certified clean marinas that are a inland facility with a boat ramp and four docks. And, and as long as there is a person that can be a point of contact that maybe helps manage a snack shop or, you know, it is technically the point of contact for that facility, um, you can become a certified clean marina. Uh, we try and be all inclusive. Our stance is if you are willing to work with us and try and implement environmental best practices, we want to work with you. And so we, we kind of adapt you'll see in a little bit the checklist, we adapt it and it's very flexible based on the type of facility you have. So one final thing I wanna mention just about the background and kind of to give you perspective here is uh, there are certification programs across the Great Lakes for, for clean marinas. And instead of competing against each other, we have instead operated or opted for creating a network, a collaborative network. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't in the past, to check out the website that's on here. I think Paul may put it in the chat box window um, at, a, at a later time. The Great Lakes Clean Marina Network is, is a truly uh, interactive group of clean marina programs across the Great Lakes. And we regularly communicate with each other if, if one of my marinas down here, you know, if we're having problems with boat bottom washing, I have a couple marinas up in Wisconsin with their clean marina program that have put in boat bottom washing uh, setups. And they've been doing some kind of full cycle treatment for a while. So I could put you in touch with one of the marinas up there. Um, Michigan Clean Marina has been working with their Marine Trades Association on new marketing for their clean marinas program. So. So we're all here to help each other 
And we have on this website, a Google map that shows every certified clean marina. I will say we updated it in January, 2020. So we may need to update it again, um, but every certified clean marina in the Great Lakes. And the idea is we, each of our programs will promote that Google map um, marketed at boat shows, things like that. And the idea is as many boaters sometimes travel throughout the Great Lakes, we encourage them to choose a clean marina wherever they're at. So again, instead of competing, we say, hey, check out this map, find your nearest clean marina wherever you're at in the Great Lakes, and there you go, and you're supporting a good thing. So um, that's a really great program. We actually have a listserv. So if you're interested, you can contact me and I can get you signed up. Um, the idea behind that is any marina can just reach out to that listserv. It is again, clearly it's non-regulatory. It's simply to help us share ideas, share challenges, find solutions. So we've had people email like, hey, I, I've got this issue with this boater contract or what have you and, and other marinas will respond and offer their guidance or how they've dealt with certain things. So uh, that is out there for you as a resource. Um, feel free to check it out and contact me if you have any questions on that. All right. So now getting back to the Ohio program, our Ohio program, again, has been around for a while and we've tried our best to build out benefits. And so I'm gonna go over a couple of these real quick here on if you become certified or if you get recertified uh, what comes with that certification. So when you get certified, we have a public announcement where I will say right now things are a little bit different due to COVID, but we are working through them and trying to come up with creative ways um, to recognize our marinas for becoming certified. Uh, historically, we would either have a award ceremony at a boat show, a, a large boat show, or really for the past couple years, we have an annual conference and we would have our certified clean marinas uh, receive the award at our, our Ohio Marina Conference presented by representatives from Ohio Sea Grant, ODNR, and LEMTA. Um, so that we would, we would always have and We'll, we're trying to come up with some creative ideas on doing that in 2021, because we probably um, in early 2021 will be limited still to um, virtual interactions for that conference. Uh, the website listing, which I already mentioned, this is a screenshot of the Great Lakes Clean Marina maps. You get populated on that map again and promoted as a marina that we encourage our voters to choose and support. You receive a certificate or a plaque that you can hang in your office or somewhere around the facility recognizing uh, your certification. And when you become recertified or you reach a higher tier in our program, we would update this and you receive a second um, either certificate or another plaque to recognize uh, moving up in the program. We have social media promotion pages. We have a Facebook page that we have, I would say, uh, significantly increased our activity online for our social media page, thanks to Paul. Uh, he has built out a wonderful daily post. And so every day we have a new social media post, I encourage you to follow us if you haven't already or have your boaters follow us for good information. And every Monday we have Marina Monday. So we go through our certified clean marinas and share out those marinas, tag you on the Facebook page and, and again, get, get the word out about the good work that you're doing. We have press release templates available. So, and, and we work with all of this with you. If, if, if you wanna be recognized and you wanna put your name out there and you wanna market yourself, we fully have the capability to support that. If you instead want to just get certified because you, you know it's the right thing and that's it, and you don't want to put it out there, that's totally fine too. <laughs> so we work with you on, on what you're comfortable with. Uh, but we do have press releases available that we could um, customize and, and get in the local paper or even um, usually once a year, we do a joint press release with ODNR and Ohio Sea Grant where we'll, we'll put out our, our list of certified clean marinas for that year. So that will be a statewide promotion. And then you receive promotional signage. Again, totally up to you if you wanna put it out at your facility or not, 
um, but we do have real estate signs and uh, fence uh, signs like aluminum signs that can go on the fence uh, to promote and put throughout your facility to help your boaters know that you're a certified clean marina. Compliance assistance and education training. This is probably the most, when I talk to our marine owners or even in some of our past evaluations that we've done our program, this is probably the number one benefit that they cite. Um, we are somewhat different than other programs um, in that the three of us, Heather, Paul, and I are all full-time funded staff who focus on clean marinas. And our job is to keep up to date with the environmental regulations that apply to marinas in the state of Ohio. And not only the regulations, but some of the best practices that may be kind of pushing the envelope or ahead of your time. So that uh, let's say, you know, if, if you are a certified clean marina, you're, you're not only doing the bare bones environmental regulations, but you're ahead of the curve. And so instead of uh, maybe if you're hesitant to directly talk to the regulatory agencies, we can be that go between. And so we can meet with you. Uh, we've been doing virtual site visits or virtual technical assistance um, you know, meetings through online right now, but traditionally we can come out to your facility, meet with you and uh, provide significant technical assistance uh, so that you can take this, you know, as a marine owner or even yacht club or boat club, there's lots of things you have to keep track of. This can be one less thing that, that you know, keeps you awake at night. Uh, we have webinars that are recorded. We regularly are looking for uh, new content. If you have a topic and you say, hey, I'd really like to know more about this you know, whatever, invasive species, boat washing, whatever, um, we may already have a webinar about that, or we may uh, be able to put together some expertise and get that information to you. We work with our partners through state agencies to get you customized aerial maps. There's a couple different uh, functions of this. You could use it just for, to have an updated aerial map of your facility, if you'd like. Uh, but really what we use this a lot for is if you are required to have a stormwater pollution prevention plan, uh, which is a regulatory requirement for some marinas, not all, but this is uh, a big part of that plan. And so rather than you have to pay to get that done, we can provide that to you for free through the program and we're updated for you. Uh, we provide technical assistance, again, through going out on site, providing training or meeting with you one-on-one -on -one to go through plans or help put together templates for you uh, re regarding environmental regulations. And then finally, we have workshops. This one today is really broad about the entire program, um, but we have in the past, we've had stormwater and wastewater specific workshops. Um, we've had some workshops focused on, you know, native plants or even uh, managing wildlife or geese, things like that. Um, so again, it's, this is a huge part of the program that, that we offer for free to you as part of you being a certified clean marina. Financial incentives. Um, when you become certified, there's a number of options that are available to you. I would have sent to you this morning uh, email with some of our handouts. Uh, the welcome kit flyer is shown here. That lists some of the things that we would provide to you for free that you'd be able to choose from when you become certified. Um, I think, Paul, I might have sent you, there's a, and otherwise you can probably Google it online, there's a, a discounts page that is kept up to date through the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network. There's actually a number of companies that will provide you a discount on their product if you are a certified clean marina. Um, so for example, I'm just, uh, I, I believe Mutt, but you, you know, if you're able to say, hey, I'm a certified clean marina, I'm happy to provide you a memo or documentation of that. You reach out to the company, you know, they give you a five, 10, 15% discount off of their product, which is nice. And there are low interest loans available. And again, that is usually through some of our partnerships with our other um, state and federal agencies. Reduced liabilities. Um, this gets back to kind of what I was saying before is our technical assistance and kind of giving you peace of mind. Uh, by becoming certified 
you know, you are meeting the, not only the bare bones regulations that apply to you, but also uh, you are going above and beyond. So you can truly have peace of mind that you are uh, meeting, you, you, you do not have liabilities related to environmental practices at your facility. And in some cases we have started conversations with insurance companies. So I encourage you to reach out if you have insurance at your facility, um, you know, talk to your broker, talk to your contact, let them know that you are either pursuing clean marina certification or that you um, are already a certified clean marina and you may be eligible for reduced insurance rates. There's actually several um, that we are aware of. Uh, they don't have necessarily a, a certified clean marina rate, but as long as you can show them, and again, I, we'd be happy to help get your, get your documentation together. If you can show them the types of practices that you're putting in place, which we have as our checklist, that demonstrate you're reducing your risk at your facility, absolutely they count that and, and they uh, can reduce your premium. And then finally, again, this is, and this is how far you wanna take it as far as marketing and you know, talking to your boaters or talking to your community, but you can promote to others. Hey, you know, we're doing your part. We're, um, you know, for your staff, you're making your marina a safer, healthier place to work. For your boaters, you're making it a safer, safer healthier place to recreate. And then finally, our clean boater program and training. Uh, this is something that, uh, our staff, again, provides uh, to some extent, or we're able to help you with significantly. The idea of this is, okay, you know, you become a certified clean marina and you implement some of these practices and maybe some of these changes from a management standpoint and with your staff. Well, there's another step that you can take. The, ne the next step is to then trickle down to your boaters, right? Um, it's great that as a business, you're doing your part for sustainability, but how can we engage our boaters in doing their part as well? Which not only I will say benefits the water quality, but it also benefits you because hopefully then, you know, by, by your boaters understanding what a clean marina is, uh, knowing that you're certified, you know, maybe people will be a little bit more mindful about picking up their trash, um, recycling, maybe picking up after the dog in the pet area, things like that. And so generally our marinas will say, you know, it's not only for us, but it's also helpful to have our, our boaters engaged in this and uh, doing their part. So we've got our Clean Marinas website link here. I will say we're in the middle of updating our website. Um, COVID kind of put a delay on that. So we are hoping uh, next year to have a fully updated website. Uh, the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network link is there as well. That's for publications and resources. A lot of good clean boating resources there that you can pass along. Things like fact sheets, tip sheets that you could easily print off and put in a, um, if you have a clubhouse or like a a common area where you have, you know, educational materials. There's lots of good materials that we have. Uh, right now, we're, we're directing you to online resources. Um, you know, when we're able to get back out in the field again, and, and, and hopefully at some point that will, that will happen, uh, we could provide you some of these publications uh, to have, you know, in stock at your facility. Our social media on YouTube, uh, we have the link here for Ohio DNR's YouTube page, only because they actually have been doing a lot of virtual programming throughout uh, the past six to eight months or so. And there's a lot of good content. Um, some of it may be of interest to your boaters or just fun things to put out if you have a Facebook page. Uh, and then Paul is probably putting in the chat box here some of our additional uh, social media options like our Clean Marina Facebook page and our, um, we actually have a specific Clean Marina playlist under the DR YouTube um, page where we have short, uh, really quick YouTube videos meant for boaters on some Clean Marina best practices. So say one on invasive species, you know, how to clean your boat if you're going from body of water to body of water, we have one that talks about sanding and painting. So if your boaters, you know, again, like to kind of 
have their boats out in the yard and, and get them all prepped and ready for the winter, you know, showing them how to properly put down a tarp and clean up and keep your facility debris free so it doesn't end up in the water. Presentations, we have a note about contacting us. Um, this is, this is again, a big part of what we do. We, we do technical assistance, we help certify marinas, and we, we talk to boaters. Uh, we do presentations. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have an open house or if you are doing anything right now virtually, looking for speakers. We could uh, talk about any number of uh, topics uh, for boating, as long as it deals with clean boating. So we're happy to do that. And then finally, we have a clean boater pledge program. And that is not nearly as rigorous as the clean marina program, the certification program. But the idea is boaters can uh, take a pledge. It's just a one page online form. Uh, we also have many marinas that will print off this form and actually put it in their annual slip renewals. And the boaters can fill it out if they give us an email, we have a clean boater newsletter that we'll send out usually about twice a year. And it'll just provide updates to boaters. Um, sometimes it'll have information on uh, in interesting webinars. I know I'll usually put in some updates about, you know, harmful algorithms, what they are, um, you know, to help boaters understand they're not across the entire lake. You can still enjoy a wonderful day recreating on the water. You just have to, you know, know where to go. Um, so we'll have some helpful information in those newsletters if they want to include their email. Uh, they don't have to. And uh, at the very least, it's, it's hopefully engaging voters in actually pledging, like actually putting their name to something and saying, yes, I'm going to do my part, you know, to help protect water quality in addition to you know, supporting a clean marina that I dock at. All right, I'm gonna take a quick note of the chat. Awesome, thanks Paul. Okay, and last benefit that we like to cover, this is, I call the warm and fuzzy one. It's, <laughs> with some folks it, it resonates and others it's like, okay. <laughs> um, but but at the end of the day, it's it's doing the right thing, right? So it's, it's taking your responsibility either as a business owner or as a member of a yacht club or a boat club or a, or a marine facility and recognizing you have a unique opportunity to show others, take action to help our air and water quality and uh, take responsibility for what's happening on your property. And again, it's, it's, it's kind of a, in some ways it's, it's a calling to do that right thing. But in other ways, it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity to market yourself and to, you know, become certified and then brag about it. Tell others, hey, I am doing my part to help protect Lake Erie, in my inland lake, wherever I am. Um, and so that's, that's a huge, huge thing to be able to say. All right. I'm going to pause here for a second and just take a look in the chat to make sure there's nothing. Perfect. Thanks, Paul. I see you're posting the links here. Awesome. Okay. All right. So the next step is our certification process. Um, and I know this can be overwhelming, but I promise you we have marinas that get certified in as little as three months. And um, but we work around your schedule. We have some marinas that get certified over the course of a year or a little bit longer. So we work around and, and are adaptable and flexible because we know, you know, we can set a goal and then sometimes things happen, management changes, you know, maybe high water levels happen and the whole summer gets you know, completely off, off timeline. Um, so so we, we work with you through this process. Uh, the first step you're doing right now, and by being a part of this webinar workshop, you get credit for that, uh, is, a, is uh, participating in a training. So by doing this training, this counts as the first step towards certification. The second step is pledging to become a certified clean marina. So the pledge, um, there's two pledges that I would have sent in your email. The first was a clean marina pledge. That's the one I'm talking about now. The clean boater pledge, that's the one that's, that's for your boaters that I just talked about before. 
So the Clean Marina Pledge, you fill that out and that just basically, it's, it's non-binding, it's not a contract or anything. It simply gives us permission to reach back out to you and to follow up. So it says, okay, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the Clean Marinas program. Here's my name, contact information. Here's the name of my facility. And yes, I'm, I'm pledging to start this process. Um, all that will do is then trigger us to reach out to you and work on setting up what's called a preliminary site visit. Now, traditionally, that preliminary site visit is done on site where we come uh, bring the checklist and go through the entire checklist with you walking around your facility and um, often sitting in the office and going through the checklist. Um, how we've adapted currently, I will say um, for COVID-19 is we do the preliminary site visit virtually. And, and it's working pretty well so far. So what we will do is still set up a time and date to meet with you. Um, usually set aside a, a couple hours, so either a morning or an afternoon. And we will just go through over the computer uh, the entire checklist. And those items that we would normally walk around the facility and check on, I'll put a star next to you. And so we will just spend a little bit more time at the final site visit, double checking those items and, and going through those items. And that's been working so far. So um, in current times, we'll, we'll do a preliminary site visit that's virtual. Uh, maybe a couple years down the road, we'll, we'll get back to doing some of our, our preliminary site visits. Um, I hope maybe by next year, <laughs> we'll see, um, in person. Uh, the fourth step, goes back to you. Um, once we finish that site visit, you will receive a letter that outlines recommendations. So the nice thing is, you know, we'll go through the entire checklist and we will streamline the checklist then to say, okay, you know, here's four or five items that you need to address to become a fully certified clean marina. And um, I will say vast majority of the time, when we go to a facility, you guys are already on the right track. Um, you're doing a lot of things the right way. It, 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 our checklist, and you'll see in a little bit, it seems like a lot, but a lot of things when we go through this with you, it's like, oh yeah, we're doing that. Or, oh, I could do that. And so a lot of times it's, it's very minor changes or it's minor adjustments. There may be a couple regulatory items, but again, we work with you on that. So if there are regulatory items, we will provide you the technical assistance. We can help you with templates, help you with maps to get you up to compliance. Um, and again, as part of that process, you're, you're getting peace of mind that, that you are um, doing everything correctly in terms of those environmental regulations. So that's the fourth step. Uh, after you implement those recommendations and usually reach back out to us, letting you know, letting us know, okay, I think, I think I'm good to go. That is step five. We will set up a, what's called a final site visit or a certification site visit. Um, my, either myself for Lake Erie or Heather for Inland Marinas and another person, either Paul or one of our um, advisory board members will come out uh, to the facility Right now, in current conditions, you know, we will have a socially distanced um, uh, kind of procedure uh, to do that. Uh, but we'll come out and verify that you implemented all the recommendations. And honestly, usually we end up awarding your certification that day uh, because our marinas have worked, you know, based on your timeline to get that stuff in place. And if all is well, everything checks out. Um, Usually I bring the incentive items, you know, signage, all sorts of our giveaways, and we give that to you that day. Um, and we'll sometimes take a little picture and we can get that up on social media and that's it. And uh, just a quick note about recertification. So once you're certified, that certification is good at, for five years. After five years, we will come out and set up another in-person site visit and what we usually do is every year we will do, I guess you could call it a desk audit, but it's not, you know, it's not regulatory, it's not audit. But basically, excuse me, we will send out the checklist, ask you to review it, and then send it back to us signed every year. All that is 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 we we encourage our marinas to stop, take a few minutes, 
to reflect on the practices that they agreed to when they became certified and just kind of refresh their memory, make sure that they're still doing all of those practices, et cetera. And then for our currently certified marinas, or if, or if you're ambitious, um, we have tiers. So we have a base certification, we have a gold level, and we have a platinum level. And so the cool thing is you can get your foot in the door, get certified as a, as a base certified clean marina, and then work your way up uh, towards adopting other practices and reach a gold tier or a platinum tier. We also have marinas that join and they say, I wanna be platinum out of the gate. And that is awesome and, and, and completely fine too. And if that's the case, uh, they go through our checklist, uh, work on all that and, and, and reach that tier. And the idea is um, we started this and restructured this program for continuing improvement. Uh, you know, some of our marinas have been with us, you know, for over 10 years. And so we're trying to provide new opportunities for them to uh, reach new levels, uh, you know, science and, and some of the environmental practices and some of the, um, even the kind of the movement on some of these practices has changed since 10, 15 years ago. So we try and continually update our checklist based on that. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna take another pause here and this is where we're gonna go into our tiered checklist. Thank you, Paul, for posting that. All right, so now is where we're gonna spend probably the next, I guess, half hour, 45 minutes, I'm gonna go through the tiered program checklist. Um, so if you need to take a quick break, <laughs> grab some water, use the restroom, whatever, um, I'm gonna be going over this and then we'll get into these diff different chapters here. Um, so again, as I said, we built this out to allow for different levels. Another key thing we did when we changed our program and went to this tiered checklist is um, we wanted to make it all inclusive or more inclusive of uh, variety and the diversity of marina facilities we see across Ohio. So you'll see as we go through here, there are absolutely items that address industrial type marinas, right, that have a fuel dock, um, you know, have sanding and painting, engine maintenance occurring. And then there are other ones that are absolutely geared towards facilities that maybe are a yacht club or a boat club, and maybe they just have a fuel dock, but they have extensive opportunities for engaging with a youth group or a sailing club or doing community outreach and voter education. So we have ways that I feel really, regardless of what type of facility you are, you can uh, find best practices here that, that apply to you and that can, can um, count towards the program. Alrighty, so we're gonna start with marina management. Again, Paul sent the link in there. If it helps, I try to copy this in here, but if it helps to have the checklist open on your screen, I, I'd recommend you could click that link and that will actually bring up the exact PDF um, that, that goes to the tiered checklist. On the other hand, if, if you'd rather go through your email, uh, the email that I would have sent, it's um, the item that's on there. It's called Ohio Clean Marinas Program Tiered Checklist. That's what we'll be going through. So the first couple pages on the checklist, if you have it open, are what we call kind of our demographic or our general information. So I'm skipping over that. That will be some of the uh, information we will collect on our initial, our pre-certification site visit. So it just gives us a better idea of what, what types of facility you have and the potential environmental regulations that could apply to your facility. All right, so marina management is here and I'm not gonna read through all of these, but I'm just gonna give some examples of best practices and know that you are welcome to look through the checklist on your own or set up a site visit with us um, after today or sometime in the future where we can go through this together. So these ones uh, deal with, these checklist items deal with some overall uh, management and, and even um, ways that you can kind of train your staff and set up routine activities 
um, that facilitate what we call a, a clean marina type um, uh, setup at your facility. So things like proper uh, waste management, having like these pictures show, having trash cans set up throughout the marina, making sure they're cleaned and maintained, making sure the lids are closed. Uh, if possible, uh, having recycling options available, and that can be anything from fishing line recycling bins like this PVC bin shown here on the right hand side in the pictures, to uh, if you offer shrink wrap recycling for your boaters or if that's an option available to you, and even just your normal, you know, pop cans and plastic bottle recycling, if that's doable. Uh, working to have things like uh, fuel management and, and spill um, kind of pollution prevention initiatives, having boom, having oil absorbent pads, using fuel bibs that can be put on the fuel nozzles at the fuel dock. Um, I will say several of these items we actually provide to you when you're certified. So we would go through this with you, you know, at your facility. If you already have boom and you already have kind of like a spill kit, fantastic. If you have a very basic one, we can provide you, if you get certified, up to, I believe, 40 feet of boom that we can get for you uh, just to supplement what you already have and to help you be prepared. We also have fuel bibs available uh, that usually every year we actually offer our certified clean marinas. Um, we can either ship it to you or somehow get it to you uh, so you have that available at your fuel docks. Something I forgot to mention, but you'll notice at the very top of the certification here, the, the way uh, each of these tiered checklist chapters is set up is uh, at the very top, you'll see there's a base, a gold, and a platinum outline. And the idea is if you're seeking to obtain, you know, just base certification, get your foot in the door, uh, each chapter has a minimum number of checklist items you have to be able to check yes to to become base certified. For a higher tier, such as gold, uh, you have to meet some additional practices. So in this case, base is 10, gold is 14, and then platinum for every single chapter is meeting all of the items. So, and this is chapter by chapter. So if you reach base certification in this section, but let's say in the next certification or in the next section you reach gold, you would have to meet gold in all the chapters to be certified as a gold level clean marina. So uh, you can go through these checklist items and and we have it set up so that it says yes and not yet on purpose, because again, it, it you don't have to, you know, it's awesome if you want to go for gold or platinum, but let's, if anything, work, work and focus on base. And then you can always check not yet on some other items and say, all right, well, this is something we can work on, you know, maybe in the future, or maybe we can spend a little bit more time or, or we could get a, you know, a team or see if there's a volunteer at our marina that's really interested in recycling and wants to help us get some recycling programs off the ground. Um, so we, that's how we want to set it up is you don't, you know, it's great if you, if you can do the gold or platinum, but by all means, we can, we can work with you over time on that. Something I want to note uh, at the very end of every one of these chapters will be the very last item is always provide examples of innovative best manager practices not listed above that are unique to your marina. So this is a, kind of a tra trade out checklist item. The idea is if you uh, feel that you're doing something pretty unique or you know innovative that you know we, we tried to include quite a lot of quite a range of different environmental best practices, but I'm sure there's many that we've missed. And so if you can provide your own example of something you're doing on site and document and you know show us that you're doing it, um, we can count that and use it to trade out with one of these other items. So let's say for example, you are in an area that you do not have recycling available to you, right? Maybe, maybe you know, you don't get a regular pickup. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, you don't get a regular pickup, or it's just not feasible where you're at. So what I would recommend is, okay, let's 
put not yet on the recycling option for that checklist item. And instead, let's look at something else innovative that you're doing that we can use to trade out for that checklist item. And so that's the way we can work through some of those, sometimes some of those challenges that may be out of your hands um, regarding these environmental best practices. Um, let's see here, I'm just looking through to see if there's anything else. And another thing, just to real quick, especially with several of these items where there's either products or um, even like companies that can help you with some of these practices, I encourage you to check out the discount providers list because again, many of these companies actually could, as long as you're pursuing clean marina certification, you could help, you could purchase some of these items and get a discount um, and they could, both, both you get a discount on the, on the item, you get it set up at your marina, and you get credit towards the Clean Marinas Program certification. All right, water management and resiliency. This piece goes into a little bit more on the water quality side, and then a little bit on uh, natural disasters or kind of just being better prepared or what we call more resilient, more able to bounce back um, if things like, unfortunately, Superstorm Sandy come through again, or we have a big nor'easter, or just in general, we're seeing more frequent and severe storms, and you want to try and be better prepared for that. So a couple of the items in the beginning here are very much related to just general maintenance, but for water quality, um, making sure that you have your storm drains labeled and that they're maintained to allow for what they're able to do, be a storm drain. Uh, when it floods, when it rains, they take that water off the land and drain it to the lake. Um, but making sure that only water and only storm water goes down those drains. Uh, that maybe, you know, if it's in a parking lot, you're keeping an eye on if there's cars that are leaking or there's other sources of pollution that could go down that drain. Um, and so taking some responsibility and putting actions in for that. Uh, working on some stormwater best practices, some of the pictures here show some good examples. And um, this is one that I will say when we started with Clean Marina's stormwater and, and we're even talking about now green infrastructure, were very new concepts to the marina industry. And uh, more and more, I think there's growing support both from the boating community for this and I think there's private part, uh, private public partnerships that are opening up um, to help uh, financially support or even give marinas credit on their stormwater bill or things like that for these types of things. Um, and so it, it not only looks nice, the boaters, it, it really helps enhance your marina, but the reality is it's actually really helping water quality as well. So items like this picture on the left, where instead of having say, a paved walkway or asphalt or concrete all the way to the water's edge. If you're able to be a little bit of innovative, maybe put in some trees, uh, even, you know, low bushes. I understand if you're trying to, you know, make sure the visibility is still there for the marina. Um, but even a little bit of gravel, just, just helping to slow down the water, maybe capture trash, you know, rather than cigarette butts running right off in the lake, they could get caught up in that gravel and, you know, on a slow day, your staff can can help pick up, clean up some of that trash getting caught up in there. Um, on the bottom left is actually a permeable uh, boat launch, like a canoe launch. Um, and so instead of, you know, they could have paved that with asphalt. And so instead of doing that, you do a brick paver setup. It allows for more infiltration of that water into the ground instead of running sheet flow right off into the, the body of water there. Uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan. This is another reminder that um, if you are an industrial marina, you probably are required to have what's called um, a stormwater permit and a stormwater pollution prevention plan. So there's a lot of practices that go along with that and we can absolutely help you with that. And then finally, this is one that you may have, if you have community or follow any soil and water conservation districts or things like that, you probably see is rain barrels. Um, this is a very common trend that's happening with homeowners. And I will say you'll need a lot of rain barrels to capture and, and divert 
you know, a significant amount of rainfall and keep it, you know, to, to have an impact on flooding. But the concept behind this is, is awareness, right? It's, it's, it's helping to make your boaters aware and say, you know what, I'm doing one thing. It might be one small thing, but they add up over time. And so just even simply by disconnecting one downspout and directing that water instead of into uh, um, maybe a sanitary sewer where the sewer district has to deal with that water or, or running out right off onto pavement in a parking lot, you instead divert that water into a rain barrel and you know maybe you use that water to um, water you know if you have a little flower bed or something like that. Um, but, it, but it's awareness. It's, it's, it's raising awareness about, hey, being mindful of the water that's generated on site, uh, trying to keep that storm water managed on site and minimizing the water that um, could collect pollution and run off into the lake or, or river or what have you. Oop, before I go to the next one, the only other thing I'm gonna mention here is there's a couple other water conservation practices we say water conservation and it sounds, you know, but the reality is it's as simple as, you know, if you have your staff walk around and make sure the water supply to your boaters is checked for leaks, you know, I mean, if that, that's a good practice to make sure you're not leaking water, you know, which can add to your water bill, but also is helps with water conservation. So something as simple as that checks that box. Um, and then the last cup, uh, checklist item I, is about a natural hazard emergency document. This is what, what we found over the years is many marinas, you know, you may have a, a fire or a tornado or, or, or those kinds of emergency plans, but um, making sure that you actually have a, what's called a coastal storms, or I've even worked with some marinas to take, take a hurricane preparedness plan that some, you know, maybe a colleague or I have some templates from Florida and Texas may have and slightly adapt it. I understand we don't have hurricanes in the Great Lakes, but we get some pretty severe storms and, um, and ice damage and things like that. So there's a lot to be learned from what our colleagues in the Gulf and, and, and they've kind of built up a lot of resources related to that. So I encourage you to see what's out there. I'm happy to send you some of those resources adapt some of those and, and put together, you know, you don't have to call it a hurricane preparedness plan, but a, a, a coastal storms or a natural disaster plan for your facility. And that way you have a procedure, you have an outline of, you know, who to contact, who uh, maybe a list of the emergency management agency contacts in your area, maybe local police fire. And then even more so, a lot of times with those plans and resources available, there's great fact sheets and even webinars and resources for boaters. So how do boaters properly tie down their vessels and how do you make sure your boaters are educated to make sure that you and your staff don't have to go around the entire marina, you know, when a nor'easter is coming in and uh, re-tie down the boats. So educating your boaters so they're prepared in those types of situations as well. Ecological considerations. This is taking one step further from some of the storm water and green infrastructure items into really looking at, okay, you know, we're by the water and we're affecting wildlife. So there's fish in the water, there's birds, snakes, play, all, all kinds of things right around our facility um, that, that depend on that clean water and clean air. So things like using aquatic safe herbicides and pesticides, Many, if you have a contractor that comes in and treats your facility, I almost guarantee you, if you talk to them and just double check that they're using aquatic safe products, they, they'll know what you're talking about. Probably many of you are already doing this. It's just making sure, documenting that you're doing, that they are really truly, you know, using the aquatic safe chemicals or even best case scenario, if, if you actually stop using those chemicals or make sure you're not using them before a rainstorm, for example, or uh, maybe engage uh, <laughs> some folks for community ser service, or if you have some downtime for staff to, to manually remove the weeds instead of using chemical uh, treatment. Some of the pictures on the left here give examples of enhancing habitat, whether it's for species diversity, wildlife enhancement, or 
switching from more invasive plants and shrubs to native. So we have here, you can see in some of the pictures, some of the flowers. A lot of those, if you can transition out of the kind of a common trend that we're seeing is people planting pollinator gardens. They're great for birds and bees and butterflies and they're becoming really popular. The whole um, the monarch butterfly movement and trying to help that population um, is something that like young kids are very engaged in. It would be a great opportunity. You could do a, a community project with a youth group, have them help plant the garden. You know, you can get a sign for it. There's all kinds of opportunities there. Um, so pollinator gardens, having a, even a birdhouse just for um, species, for, for habitat. Um, looking at areas of the facility, and I know, you know, it depends on where you are. You may be in a very high wave action area with lots of erosion issues. And so the only option may be a bulkhead or riprap or, or um, you know, having hardened shoreline. But if there are opportunities for looking at even a small section of your facility, maybe that doesn't have docks or that's off to the side, either protecting it and making sure that it's, um, you know, not developed or looking at um, some newer techniques that are called living shorelines. The idea is using mother nature and, and some of the research that we found to help still brace and help with erosion control, um, help with nutrient runoff, help uh, put plant the right plants in place that actually hold the soil and keep it from, from eroding off. Um, but in the same way, you're enhancing that habitat. So you're offering maybe trees or shade that can help with fish. Um, there's, there's been significant research been done on if you have a, you know, a solid shoreline, a man-made shoreline versus one that even, even riprap that allows some vegetation, it sounds great, but there's some the new engineering technologies that, that provide for that. Um, still provides a structural, you know, stability, right? But that creates these nooks and crannies where juvenile fish can spawn and uh, be protected and grow and have good sources of food that help our fish um, populations in the lake. The last two sections here are gonna deal with boater education and then community outreach and, and kind of training your staff. So these are ones that, to be honest, it's, it's you know, it's, it seems like a lot here, but it's really, pretty simple. There's, a, there, and there's lots of different ways that you can accomplish these checklist items. Uh, you offer vessel safety checks to your boaters annually. So if you partner with a local, you know, Coast Guard Auxiliary, Power Squadron group and have them come in and do vessel safety checks, we've been working with a lot of those groups and they're starting to now not only educate, especially new boaters or, or refresh boaters memories on safe boating practices, but they'll also, you know, talk to them about, hey, do you, you know, do you know where your bilge is versus, um, you know, where you fuel up? Make sure, you know, you're fueling up in the proper, proper tank. Um, things like that. Uh, you know, do you use a bilge sock in the bilge? And, uh, you know, so so those are good good practices to have. Providing educational materials, anything from our tip sheets and rack cards that we could get to you to. Maybe you have us come in and do a presentation to your boaters or, or you share a webinar. If you have a newsletter, maybe you share a recording or some sort of presentation. Uh, at the bottom, uh, number G is an interesting one that we added um, just because we feel like peer pressure helps, <laughs> right? And, and recognition and so publicly recognizing your boaters when they demonstrate environmental stewardship. So. If you don't already have either a boater of the month or maybe at the end of the season, you recognize one of your members that has truly, you know, if you become a clean marina, let's say they help and, and help keep an eye on other boaters uh, to make sure they're picking up their trash. Or um, if you're at a facility that's maybe got a boat ramp and has a lot of transient boaters, um, maybe there's someone that starts a group and when a fishing tournament comes in, they do a, a checkpoint for encouraging anglers to clean, drain, and dry their boat before they go to a new body of water. If you have somebody that does that, recognize them. Call them out in front of other people. 
that not only encourages them and says, hey, thanks for, you know, doing the right thing, um, but hopefully it encourages others to like, oh, wow, maybe I should, you know, participate and help our marina be a clean marina. Um, that's pretty much everything there. And I know Paul has put some of the information. I will say um, we kind of have a neat fact sheet that's available on the Clean Marina Network website and I can send it out in handouts as well. But uh, we, we put together a, like a little two page um, fact sheet on how boaters can put together their own pollution prevention kit. And the idea is, you know, the same way that a boater would prepare for a safe day on the water. You know, you've got your life jackets, you've got your flare, you've, you've got all of that, and you've essentially got a checklist for safe boating. Well, our stance is we should also have a checklist for clean boating, right? If, you know, if you if, again, if you're going to be a responsible boater, be respectful not only in, of the water for, you know, understanding that it can get dangerous and you need to be safe, but also understanding that, that if we want to keep boating, we need to keep our waters clean and healthy. And so we have, you know, this duffel bag, but it could be somebody just putting together a, a little bag that they have at home, having a build sock, having oil absorbance sheets, um, having a pair of gloves, a trash bag, you know, making sure they're bringing a trash bag with them to collect their trash when they're out on the water. Um, things like that, that could be quite simple, but in case of an emergency or if there is a you know, oil spill or something that happens while they're out on the boat, um, they're a little bit better prepared to handle that and deal with that. All right. Finally is employee training and community outreach. This is both in regards to how you work with your staff and also how you work with your facility um, and, and the members uh, at your facility and even partners, neighbors, community members. So we encourage and ask that you document and regularly maintain records for your employees. This usually is a requirement of environmental regulations if they apply to you, um, but we usually ask even if your, let's say stormwater uh, permit doesn't apply to you, um, as a clean marina, we, we ask that you do spend, you know, if you're getting your seasonal staff on board in the springtime, you know, spend five, 10, 15 minutes going through a training with them that's focused on, hey, we're a clean marina, here's the types of practices that we have agreed to adopt as being clean marina. And even though, you know, it may be the marina manager or key point of contact that is in this webinar now, or that goes through the, the certification with us, it should be the responsibility of all the staff to make sure that, you know, you guys are meaning clean marina standards. So um, ideally it's, it's kind of a culture that we wanna see adopted at the marina. Whereas even if the marina manager's not there for the day, you know, the staff again, take pride in being a clean marina and are, are doing things like, you know, walking around the marina, cleaning out the storm drains, making sure the trash can lids are closed, uh, things like that. Very similar to the clean boater, uh, session, we have a, uh, a checklist item here about publicly recognizing your employees or, or if you're a boat club or a yacht club, you know, if it's a member that's maybe a, a member of the uh, yacht club, you know, the facility that helps maintain the yacht club and uh, recognize them either at the end of the summer say, hey, this is a person that's gonna, you know, a member of our staff or a member of our uh, support team that has gone above and beyond. And, and for the same reasons as the boater, it, it recognizes them, calls them out, says, hey, we see what you're doing and we appreciate it. And then hopefully it encourages others to do the same, you know, for, for the next year. Uh, number F, partnering with a local vocational school, community college, youth club, or other educational entity. This can be as simple or, or as complex as you like. It could literally be, yeah, let's say we put in a butterfly garden somewhere on site that could be adopted by a local club or, or a youth group or you know, Sea Scout troop. 
um, that they can help get off the ground. Maybe you um, have a cleanup. There's are some pictures of a, of a waterfront shoreline cleanup that we did in partnership with the marina and restaurant. Um, maybe you partner with a group uh, to, to do a boating class, whether it's power boating, paddling, sailing, but you make sure that not only are you teaching you know, those boating skills, those hands-on boating skills, but you're also providing some stewardship education, right? You're teaching those recreational boaters to make sure that they are, you know, respectful boaters, responsible boaters when they're on the water. And I will say there's many times where we've partnered with our safe boating colleagues. So we come out with watercraft or the power squadrons or coast guard auxiliary. And so they can cover the safe boating and, you know, proper handling for on the water training. And we can cover, okay, you know, now what, what happens if you want to be a clean boater? And so we have little incentives, giveaways that we can give to the boaters and again, provide that education. So it's not something that you have to do. You just have to offer us the opportunity to work with that group or have a program there. All right, so that is our, our checklist. I wanna say um, those are the key tiered checklist items. I don't go through the regulatory items on this webinar or workshop purposely because that's a whole nother section. And, and the reality is every marina is so different um, that I don't wanna go through every regulation because some of it may, may not apply to you at all. Um, but know and understand that, uh, that that's the tiered checklist. That's basically the meat of what you would have to select from to either be base gold or platinum certified. And then when we would come out or set up a virtual preliminary site visit, we would then go through with you the regulatory items. Um, if, if you look at the checklist that I would have sent to you in the email, those are the last, I think it's two pages of that checklist. And so that's something I would recommend to take a look at before we were to come out or before you have your pre-certification site visit. Um, check yes, no, or NA. There's, there's many facilities that, that many of these regulations don't apply to, uh, but if they do apply to you, it's, it's a good thing to be aware of. And, and, it's, a, and it's okay, you know, if you say, no, you're not following that, that's okay. We'll talk about that when we, when we get to it and uh, we'll help walk you through any regulations that may apply to you. All right. I'm gonna close out here with a couple projects and then we will open up our Q&A. So these are a few things and I apologize because I know Paul may be doing some, uh, I'll, what I'm gonna do is cover these projects briefly and then I've got a couple slides more in depth about the projects and Paul will be sharing a lot of the links to these projects. So again, if you are interested in bookmarking them or saving them for later, uh, following up on them, you can, you can do so at that time. So the Ohio Marina Conference is an annual professional development conference that we host for any marina owner or partner across Ohio. We purposely call it the Ohio Marina Conference and not the Ohio Clean Marina Conference um, because while we will have, it's, it's run and facilitated by our program, but um, we try and make it educational um, on several levels. It will have presentations by say, you know, ODNR, maybe uh, Division of Wildlife with an update on fisheries for Lake Erie. Um, maybe EPA will provide an update either on um, stormwater management or boat bottom washing changes that are happening. Uh, but we'll also have folks like our local tourism bureau talk about, you know, how to improve your marketing of your facility or, um, We've had presentations on like how to um, work with uh, your local utility to help lower you, your utility bills in terms of energy, but, but obviously from, from a financial perspective as well. Um, so we, we try and bring together experts from across Ohio and even outside Ohio uh, for the sole purpose, the picture here is in the bottom left of the conference from a couple years ago. Um, the sole purpose is, is for you all to be able to you know, get some information straight from the experts, 
again, in a non-regulatory setting, non-threatening setting, um, and answer, you know, get questions answered, and also network. You know, I know the boat shows sometimes in a traditional year, um, you know, you, a lot of you are there, but you're there trying to, you know, sell boats or get, get dockers at your facility. And so there's not a lot of time maybe to catch up with colleagues or interact. And so we created this conference as, as both a professional development and educational opportunity for you, but also a networking opportunity where you can come together and interact with your colleagues. So that traditionally was a in-person conference. In 2021, we will be having that conference virtual. Um, so we don't have a date yet, but stay tuned and we will absolutely uh, follow up with you and uh, hope, hope that you'll join us uh, for that conference. Green infrastructure projects, I'll talk more about this in a little bit, um, but we are doing a lot with what's called green infrastructure. And, and there's there's a lot to be learned from that. Um, we have worked quite a bit this year to put together something called a virtual reality interactive ideal clean marina uh, tour that I'll talk about in a little bit, um, which is pretty cool. We're pretty excited about that. Uh, boat wash wastewater. For those of you, and this is something that I'm happy to talk more about in the Q&A session. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, boat wash wastewater is, is undergoing a significant regulatory change. It actually already has. And so our marinas across Ohio are faced with now, um, if they conduct power washing of the bottoms of vessels in the fall, um, we need to manage that. That is considered a wastewater and is not allowed to be discharged uh, to the waters of the state. And so we need to find ways. Um, we've got some significant research. I've got a fact sheet on that that I'll try and share with you at the end, um, unless Paul might be able to get that together. And uh, we're happy to provide technical assistance and talk with you a lot more about that. Um, and just, you know, part of my plan this fall is to hopefully get some case studies together of some of the marinas across Ohio that are um, working to get into compliance with this boat wash wastewater regulation. So uh, clean boater training. This is, you know, I mentioned some of our clean boater initiatives like the pledge and the education. Um, something we are working on right now and that we hope to have um, you know, live and running in 2021 possibly is it, what we're calling a clean boater certification program. And so we're looking at it as if, if you have, you know, it's not gonna be every boater, but if you have that boater that really is, you know, gung ho on, you know, environmental either recycling or wants to plant native plants all throughout the marina and they're, they're just, they're interested in the program. They're, they're, they're someone that respects the lake and you just know they're, they're that type of person. Um, this would be a more rigorous program than our clean boater pledge. And the idea is we would set up an online training where that person can go through a more extensive, kind of similar to this webinar, uh, like a module and become certified as an Ohio clean boater. And as part of that, they would be part of a, a subset, kind of a unique group of people that we would then have a listserv for and have um, more opportunities for either volunteer support for different projects that you may have going on at your marina um, or, or, or helping there to be more people throughout Ohio who are uh, trained in clean boating best practices that can help support you as a certified clean marina and then can help educate their peers or other members of your facility about practicing clean boating. So we are working on that. Uh, marine debris shrink wrap and monofilament recycling. This falls under some of the projects annually that we, we focus on. Um, we do have a shrink wrap recycling program. I will say it's very much in flux um, because of the plastics and general recycling market right now, but we are happy to try our best to facilitate a program in your area. Um, what we've done is instead of kind of a statewide program right now is we're, more, we're working more in pockets, uh, regions. So maybe Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, 
central Ohio, southeast and southwest. And so we feel that that's a better approach. And so trying to get kind of these groups of local partners together help facilitate boat shrink wrap recycling and connect you with some of the, there's actually only one recycler that we're aware of right now in the whole state that accepts um, shrink wrap. So, but feel free to contact us. There's some links that Paul will be putting in the chat box, both for a great video that talks about how to remove recycling or remove shrink wrap, excuse me, in the spring. And then also there's an interest form that if you're interested in kind of lo looping in on this program and learning more, you can contact, fill out that form. Uh, monofilament recycling, that, that's a pretty good in initiative. If, if, if you're interested in uh, setting up a fishing line recycling bin at your facility, definitely reach out to us. We can help facilitate that, get you a bin. Um, I'll also say that's a great community project. It's perfect for if you, if you have a Boy Scout, Girl Scout troop, local community group. Uh, I encourage you to work with that group, have them adopt the bin so that they take responsibility and you and your staff don't have to have the responsibility of emptying that bin. And there's a lot that they can do with that. They can you know, partner, um, we actually partner with Berkeley and the fishing line gets recycled into artificial fish habitat and tackle boxes and all sorts of good stuff. Marine debris, I think Paul may put an uh, article in the chat box window. Uh, for those of you up on Lake Erie, uh, we are Clean Marinas along with Ohio Sea Grant and other partners, several restaurants and marinas up at the Putin Bay area is in, the, we're in the middle of a several year uh, grant project up there where they are looking at behavior change and a skip the straw campaign, educating tourists and boaters that go up to that area. And there's a lot of good information that we've learned from that. And so we're happy to partner with you. If you have a, a bar or a restaurant at your facility and you want to look at maybe more sustainable purchasing, switching over to compostable or um, using less straws or things like that, um, we could help with that. And, and provide some training to your staff so that they can, you know, when you talk to people that come to your restaurant or bar and say, well, why don't you have a straw that, you know, you can have some information to give to them about why, you know, maybe you're taking that action or making those changes at your facility. And again, a reminder about the workshops and online training. We have that happening all throughout the year. Um, we actually just last Thursday, had a recorded webinar where we had presenters from the Ohio, e or excuse me, US EPA Region 5 office talk about spill prevention control and countermeasure regulations. So if you have above ground storage or significant underground storage for gasoline or diesel, uh, let me know, I can, I can get you that recorded webinar. That was a great uh, refresher on that regulation. And I will have more, more like that. And those are all marketed to our certified and pledged clean marinas. And then finally, our clean marinas calendar and guidebook. Um, we probably are not doing it this year, but every couple years we have a uh, calendar where we will highlight all of the certified clean marinas from the past couple years. And so again, it's one more piece we'll use as a marketing tool. All of our certified clean marinas get one. And so you guys can, um, have that to display and promote to your boaters and, and have available again is just more um, getting the word out about the good work that you're doing. Our guidebook, um, Paul has put in the chat box window. If you would like a hard copy of the guidebook, let us know. I believe he put the hyperlink for the guidebook, but I'll, I'll um, double check on that. I'll be sending a follow up email to everyone again with the recording and the presentations and I'll also send you the guidebook. So feel free to reach out to me if you if you don't get that or you need a hard copy of our guidebook. Uh, we are actually in the process of updating that. So hopefully by 2021, um, we will have a revised guidebook that matches and reflects our um, tiered program checklist. But that I refer to kind of as our, it's, it's our Bible almost. It's, it's, it's all, it's a significant over you know 140 160 pages long but it, it's all the meat that is behind everything that we do in our in our checklist and it help explains the regulations 
um, the reasoning behind those regulations and offers a lot of great resources. So I, you know, you, you may not use it every day. You may have the checklist every day as something you, you know, or at least once a week, hopefully take a look at, make sure you're still following things. The guidebook is for when, you know, you're like, man, I really don't understand that wastewater. You look up that chapter and you, you, you can learn more about it and learn more about what's, what the reasoning is behind those regulations. All right, a couple of our projects here that I mentioned I was gonna go more into here. The green infrastructure projects, this is something we're really excited about. Um, we are actually working with eMarina in Huron and we will be installing two, uh, what's called green infrastructure stormwater best practices to demonstrate and monitor, to actually look at you know, what's the real impact of these practices in a marina setting um, on the lake. And that's gonna be going in hopefully this winter, um, right, right before winter. And we'll be starting monitoring by the spring and have some data and um, feel free to stay in touch with us. And, and if it's all right, I'll probably keep you guys on our list of folks to stay in touch with. And hopefully by next fall or at the very late latest, um, into 2022, we will have a workshop specifically focused on stormwater to help share out with all of you uh, some of the benefits of some of these practices and um, ways that you could look at adapting your facility um, to allow for green infrastructure. And that just to, the key behind this project is, and one of my goals is I, I, I wanted to make this practical. Um, a lot of you, if you walk around your community, you may see these giant, you know, publicly funded green infrastructure projects at parks and libraries and, and things like that. And um, that's huge. That's what we need to help with our flooding, our flood control and some of the water quality issues that we have um, with runoff of phosphorus, nitrogen and other pollutants going into Lake Erie and our inland bodies of water. But the reality is um, there's also some very practical and um, innovative yet, yet doable things that you can do at your facility. And so that's what we're trying to do through these projects is say, all right, you know, we might not have the multi-million dollar project for a, you know, a retrofit green infrastructure project that, that a public square may have, but are there a few, some ways we can look at putting in a cistern or, or even taking a grassy area and replanting it in a certain way that allows it to, to act less like, even though it looks like grass, sometimes tur turf grass acts just like concrete. And so helping to soak up the water, soak up um, some storm water, help with local flooding, and also help with water quality and help improve water quality. So we're really excited about that. This is our um, ideal clean marina, I guess you could say phase one project. Um, the idea behind this is this was a initiative that was actually an idea of several of our advisory board members. And the idea is, you know, this is not a marina, this is a simulated marina. Um, it's not a true, true marina in, in Ohio somewhere, but maybe, you know, might be some, some pieces, parts of your facility might look like this. And we put almost every one of our checklist items in our tiered program checklist into this map and uh, this rendering. And so the hope is, you know, when you go through the checklist, you, you are learning about these practices, but this helps you visualize it. Oh, okay, that's what they mean by, you know, if there's an opportunity for, um, you know, planting a butterfly garden, no, it could go over by the clubhouse. It doesn't have to be right out, you know, in front of the marina blocking the view of the boaters if that's some, not something you're, you're into. Um, okay, you know, you want some wildlife habitat. Well, you could put a birdhouse all the way over here instead of, you know, if you don't want birds, you know, <laughs> And, and some of the stuff that comes with birds um, near your docks. Um, so the, the hope is you can look at this, helps you think, helps you innovate, helps you come up with the ideas for how you could implement these practices at a marina. So that was the first step. And the next piece, this is the hyperlink that I would not click on because it would, would require quite a bit of bandwidth, but definitely save or bookmark um, 
and, and then again, we'll send this out to look at later. It's pretty cool. Our phase two of our ideal clean marina build out is we have worked with ODNR and several of our marina partners to gather drone footage, 360 video and still imagery of several of these practices that we are having right in this ideal clean marina map. And to help, um, we actually input them in a three-dimensional virtual reality simulation online so that you can actually open it up on the on your phone. If you open up the link on your phone, you can simulate as if you're walking around the marina and you can click on an icon that maybe says, you know, storm drain labels, and it'll bring up a picture of what were of an actual storm drain in Ohio at a marina that was labeled and gives you an idea. Um, so it's hopefully to build this transition between, okay, here's simulated what the perfect clean marina could be and what you could do. But then we also put in some images of actual marinas in Ohio that have done some of this stuff. So you can see, oh, okay, that's what they mean. Or this is, again, helping you visualize how you could do these types of things at your facility. And um, that, you know, it, it might take some work with us, right? It may take some partnership and uh, us helping you to find funding or, or get some pieces together. But for example, if you're gonna redo a sidewalk, like let's stop and think about whether or not we could, instead of doing concrete or asphalt, maybe we could do pavers or something, or there's some of these new practices that are out there that you could get credit for um, that look nice. You can put a sign there and educate your boaters saying, hey, look what we're doing um, that help water quality, help with flood control and, and still function, you know, as a sidewalk. So that's the, the first phase of this you'll see if you go on the link is just focused on green infrastructure and stormwater. So we've got all these best practices incorporated into the, um, the virtual reality tour, but know that um, our plan is to build this out basically each year, adding to this tool and then funding this um, to have all of our clean marina best practices. And I wanna do a call out if any of you have any of these things at your facility and you want an opportunity to get promotion and get highlighted in an international tool that we're going to be sharing out across the Great Lakes and promoting um, to, to many community of practices across the country, um, reach out to us. We'd love to feature if you have a really nice, you know, pump out station, if you have a fish cleaning station with nice signage about proper management of fish waste, if you have a life jacket loaner station, if you have you know, a really nice recycling bin set up and any of these items, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'd love to have you, you know, get some still imagery, maybe drone footage or 360 video of some of these practices and have you highlighted. Marine debris and recycling, this one I already mentioned, but again, shrink wrap recycling, we have a video. We have helped facilitate shrink wrap recycling programs and we'd love to partner with you if you have any boaters that are really into, or maybe a youth group that's really into marine debris or you know waste management, we can help you with that. We can do a partnership effort on that. And the last thing I'll mention before I finish up here is our business retention and expansion survey. This is getting to where um, you know a core function of what we do. We help you with environmental sustainability, but our goal is to also help you with economic sustainability. So uh, we have for several years now partnered with Ohio State University and their extension program on a initiative that they have, Ohio State's been doing for years called Business Retention and Expansion. And this is a program that traditionally is done where county extension educators will go county by county and work with the local economic development corporation or county commissioners to survey their businesses and assess their businesses uh, to see how they're doing. Are they getting the services they need and the support they need from their local community? And what we did is in 2014, we took this program and adapted it for marine owners. And so instead of going county by county, by county we basically applied it to the entire marina industry and got a, a pretty good snapshot of 
where marina businesses were. You know, are you are you looking to expand? Are you staying stagnant? You know, just keeping the same amount of staff and and just trying to get by. Are you potentially on the cusp of going out of business? And what are the local needs from your community? Um, whether it's even just like maintenance you know, snow plowing your roads in the winter time to make sure you can get in, in and out of the marina or do you have enough lighting? Do you have local support of a fire department? Things like that. Um, what are your needs to help you thrive as a business? And so that went very well in 2014. We did it with just Lake Erie Marinas. We are now trying to execute this survey so we can have a trend so we can over, you know, every four to five years do this survey and build upon the knowledge of how the marina industry is doing across the state of Ohio. Um, we need participants. We need at least 70 marinas across Ohio to participate in order to statistic statistically produce a report on the marina industry for the state of Ohio. So please, if you have not already, and if you don't mind sharing it with your colleagues, um, Paul will copy the link into the chat box. Take a few minutes. It takes about 10 minutes to go through the survey. And this is not exclusive to formal marinas. Any type of marine related facility, marine retailers, boat clubs, yacht clubs, marinas themselves, any marine related industry counts under this survey. Um, so please take a few minutes to fill it out. At the very end of when we're hoping to close this out, we did it through 2019 and 2020. We'll be drawing for uh, pollution prevention kit and some other supplemental items that will total close to $100 to $150 worth of items. <clears throat> so please do uh, take the time to fill this out. And anybody that participates will share the report with you. And there's some pretty significant numbers that you can take back to your local decision makers. Things that we'll be able to quote, say, for example, the number of jobs and the local tax base economic impact that marinas make to the total economy to the state of Ohio. All right, so with that, I'm going to leave uh, my contact information as well as Heather and Paul's information here. Uh, I'll send a reminder if you're getting our emails and newsletters. Uh, we have uh, our Facebook page here, but I'll, I'll try and remember to put up the subscribe link. If you go onto the Ohio Sea Grant website, there's a subscribe button and you can choose to subscribe and sign up for our Ohio Clean Boater newsletter. And uh, if you pledge to become a certified clean marina, if you print out or, or you know, virtually sign that clean marina pledge and send that back to us, uh, we will get you signed up for our, our certified and pledged Ohio Clean Marinas listserv. And so you'll get uh, communication from us on a number of items again, related to environmental regulations or any initiatives that we may have going on. So I am going to stop the recording at this point now.